Hi, we often get asked, how do you do authentication in Toddle? So I want to show you a small example with a to-do app where we built the front end in Toddle and the back end in Sano. So here we've got the, the basic setup. Uh, we've got Toddle building the front end for the app, and as I said, Sano for the back end. And because Sano owns the back end, Sano also owns authentication. So we want it set up so that when we make a request for Sano for some data, it needs to get us back, for example, the to-do items, but only the to-do items that match our personal user. Uh, we don't want to see everything. We only want to see our own to-do items. So the first step is to actually log in to Sano. We do that by sending a login request that includes our email and password. And then we're going to get an authentication token back. And then we're going to store this token in Toddle. And then we're going to use that as we do follow-up requests. And so next time we get the to-dos, we're going to add this token as a header here in, um, in our request. And that's going to tell Sano that this is the user that's making the request, and they're actually authenticated. And there's a few reasons why we want to use a token over uh, just sending the password every time. Uh, the main one is that with a token, you actually can have session management and you can know how long people have been logged in. And the other thing is that it's a lot more secure. We didn't want to store the password anywhere because storing password gives attackers an opportunity of, of getting the password. Of course, if you get someone's password, then their uh, authentication is compromised. If you get someone's token, it's not great. It's still, of course, a secure risk, but tokens expire. So it gives you a limited time of attack and it's a lot more secure to use authentication tokens instead of sending passwords along with every single request. So every sort of authentication you'll, you'll run into pretty much anywhere uh, with any backend is some sort of form of authentication, getting back an authentication token, and then using that token to ver verify all your requests going forward. Um, so let's have a look at how this looks in Toddle. I've opened up our to-do app. So I've already built a to-do app. Uh, all the UI is built. We just need to hook it up to an API. And in this case, you can see on the homepage, uh, we've got a few APIs set up already. Right now, we have the one called Items, which loads all our to-do items. And you can see as our result here, we're getting an error saying unauthorized because we are not logged in. Therefore, we're not getting any items back. So let's go to our login page uh, right here. And here we've got the login form already set up. Um, we've got an email and a password input. And they are set up to um, update our email and password variables. So if we go into testing mode here, we go in here in testing mode and we type in our email and password and then go back, we can see that it updates our email and password variable. And yes, my password for the test is password. So what we need to do now is actually set up the API to uh, the request to the API to log us in. And if we look here at our Sano uh, page, we can see we've got our to-do auth collection. If you go and create a Sano uh, project, there's a ton of uh, demo projects you can start with that'll that'll look just like this. Um, and we're going to start by calling our login endpoint. And we can see here that this is a post request and it's going to be to the URL slash auth slash login. And we also up here have our API group base URL. So we're going to copy that and then we're going to go and add that to this project URL um, variable we created. So this is a way of just keeping this. We want to keep this and use it for all our requests. So it's sort of a nice, easy way to keep it in a variable. And then we're going to create a new API and we're going to call it login. For method, we're going to use post. And for the URL, we're going to use our project URL. And then we need to add the path. And if we look back at Sano, we can see it was auth and then login. So we're going to add the same thing here, auth and then login. The last thing we add, need to add here is we need to add a body that contains our email and password, just like we could see here on our uh, request. Sano says it needs two inputs, email and password, and it needs that as a JSON body for this request. The way we do that in Toddle, <clears throat> is to create a record 
and then add email as our email and password whoop, as our password. There we go. So the output here we can see is an object with email and password. So that's all we need to do here. Now we're done. Now we just need to make sure that we're calling that API when we submit this form. So we're going to go and select our form. And then in the submit event we have here, we're going to add call login. And these two overrides the URL and body. We don't need them at the moment. This is so that you can locally here inside the workflow override either the URL you're going to use or the body you're going to send. But in this case, the API is already set up correct, so we don't need to do any of that. We're not right now going to define what happens once you've logged in. We'll do that afterwards, and I'll show you why we do this way. Let's go and uh, test this. We already filled in our information, so we're just going to click login. And what we see is that right now nothing happens, and that's because we called the API, but we haven't done anything with that information. So if we go back out into edit mode, look at our API, we can see that we've now got data back and we can see we've got this auth token. So the request succeeded, but since we didn't tell Tuttle what to do after the request succeeded, it just stays on the same page. Uh, but now that we have the data, we can go and set up the next step. So we're going to select our form, go back into our submit workflow, and then right here on the API call, we can define what should happen on success and click this little workflow button here. And what we want to do here is we want to save our auth token. So there's an action here called save auth tokens. And what that does is you can specify an access token and an ID token to be saved in total as a cookie that allows us to send them along with future API requests. In this case, uh, Sano doesn't provide an ID token, so we're just going to use the access token. We can specify that here. We got that back from the API, so we can pick the API, the data, and then the auth token. So we call it access token. Uh, Sano call it auth token. It's just different names. Um, it doesn't really matter that we name them differently. It's all kind of dependent dependent on what backend you're using. Um, and the last thing we want to set here, we're just going to clear out the ID token because we don't use that. The last thing we want to set is the redirect URL. So this is the URL or the path we're going to redirect to once once we save these auth tokens. So we generally don't want to stay on the login page after we logged in. So this let us specify where do we want to go when we're done. So this sets all the login, makes it all ready to go. The last thing we need to do is now go back to our home page. And for our items request we looked at before, we need to let it know that we need to add some authentication. And we actually have a set here where we can say we want that the authentication to be a bearer and access token. So this is the authentication scheme that Sano uses. It's sort of the most popular one. And it basically says, put in an authentication header with the bearer and then access token. And the access token here will be the one that we saved. So we're still not getting a response because we're still not logged in. But now we can go here to our live version of the site. And let's just go to slash login. And here we're going to uh, first log in. And then immediately we get redirected to our homepage where we can see we now have items. And that's because we made an authenticated request to that service. If we go back here, and refresh, that same authentication token is saved as a cookie, so it's available every time we hit that same app. So now by authentication in our preview app, we actually also authenticated in our application inside Total. So that is a quick intro to how you do authentication in Total. It does vary a little bit depending on what backend you use, but you're always back to the same sort of saving that auth token and then using that in the API for any future requests. Thank you very much. Let me know if you have any questions. Leave a comment. Um, and uh, I can't wait to see what you're building with Tuttle.